obviously there will be spoilers then. This is not supposed to be a full-blown analysis of the film I'm going to talk about today. You can find a lot of those floating around on YouTube. I'll try to link them down below. But instead, I'm going to talk about some of the key themes and sort of mix it in into some sort of an analysis review of everything I've seen, read, and heard about this film, if that makes sense. Make sure to watch the movie first before listening. And if I say anything that could be interpreted as opinionated, these are just my thoughts, and I'm more than willing to hear the other side. Interstellar. Probably one of my favorite films of all time. It's a great film. Like, really, really great. To me, there are bad movies, good movies, great movies, and interstellar movies. Each time I watch it, I realize there's nothing in this film that is bad for me. Well, I lied, there actually is something, but I'll get to that later. To be an interstellar film, you can't just make a sci-fi movie and be done with it. It can't just be great. It needs to be really, really complex. As some other reviewers have noticed as well, the film seems to be many sub-movies and plots intertwined throughout the main overarching story which eventually leads us to the emotional and yearning finish. Even though Christopher Nolan, my favorite director of all time, doesn't write most of his screenplays, his brother Jonathan Nolan does primarily, he's a master at bringing the screenplay to the table, deciding which orders to make things happen and what to change and then extracting the numerous positives while at least dampening the negatives. Memento, a film that Christopher Nolan actually wrote, adapted from his brother's short story, is an astounding example of his pure class when it comes to screenplay writing. Here's how he explains the film's structure. My solution to telling the story subjectively was to deny the audience the same information that the protagonist is denied. And my approach to doing that was to effectively tell the story backwards. That way, when we meet a character, we don't know, just like the protagonist, how he's met that person, whether he's even met that person before, or whether or not they should be trusted, that kind of thing. That's basically the end of the movie. This stuff is the black and white stuff. This is color. And this is running backwards as a series of jumps. And what we do is we cut between the two the whole way through. So we alternate scene here, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there, and they meet towards the end of the film. But then within this, you have flashbacks to a different timeline, which is actually even earlier, somewhere around there. Also within this, you have flashbacks to an earlier time, also somewhere within there. Clearly, he knows his stuff pretty well in that he compares the mind-numbing plot of Memento to a hairpin. In general, Interstellar is a film that really banks on its acceptable, but not fully proven concepts of time and space. Ideas that the filmmakers had of black holes and time dilation and wormholes and so much more aren't fully incorrect and theoretically could happen if we were to somehow one day really be able to research these concepts. The point though, is how well Nolan can allow the viewers to stretch the peripherals of their minds and think about ideas that were truly unheard of before. At some point, great science fiction has to make a lot of risky decisions, but to go to a point of literally exploring concepts of the fifth dimension and tesseracts and time dilations through gravity and so much more but still promoting the human ideas of unity, hope, and love. That's a whole nother level. Now admittedly, there is a portion of the film which I was a little bit apprehensive about, which is when I felt the inclusion of the love transcending time and space statement. Love isn't something we invented. It's observable, powerful. It has to mean something. Love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. Maybe we should trust that, even if we can't understand it yet. Was a little weirdly written and awkward in the message it was trying to convey. The hidden meaning though, for me, was that a real and pure attraction to another human 
can create an inconspicuous connection and understanding of one another, which has to have some sort of leverage in choices we make, such as when we don't go with a more gut-felt decision than a logical one we would have made otherwise. And then we get to Hans Zimmer. In my opinion, this film has the best, and I say the best, soundtrack in any other movie ever. Every moment where the music is being played has a real definition that almost acts like another character in the plot. For example, when we get to the point in the story when the group reaches the water planet to find Miller's research, that is one of my favorite moments in the film. If you didn't know, each tick in the music you're hearing is one day passing on Earth. Think about that for a while. One blink could literally equal one day back at home. Not only that, but at some point, the music's tempo actually becomes 60 beats per minute, directly referring to our clocks at home, which run with 60 seconds per minute. Essentially, Nolan and Zimmer managed to hide the cliche of we need to get X done by Y time, otherwise Z will happen, such as generic time bomb scenes, but instead introduce the stakes at the beginning of the situation and let the beat and the rhythm of the music take over for the suspense. Something similar is also used during the famed docking scene when the steady 60 beats per minute tempo is used to mask the intense buildup of the scene. The stakes have already been established by the main characters in the beginning, but using the strong, intensive music as a steady pulse and reminder of what they have to finish, it is a perfect example of musical mixing mastery. Overall, Interstellar will remain to be one of, if not the greatest, sci-fi and possibly even of any genre, film of all time. The fact that Nolan barely used green screens for the jaw-dropping effects and visuals, and the raw acting done by McConaughey and the others, and the masterclass done by Zimmer, proves to me every time I watch it why it deserves the recognition and praise that it does, if not more. Interstellar. Thanks for watching. Look out for more content and check out these videos if you haven't yet.